Welcome, welcome uh, to our podcast this week on our 20th episode. <laughs> 20 <laughs> know why that's funny. 20 <laughs> episodes of this. It's funny because we've run out of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's it. Like, yeah. We've hit season two. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We've hit... Um, Characters. We've have... had the twists. We've yep. had the... Uh... Yeah, we didn't expect yeah. to run this long. No. Characters have now, you know... Mm-hmm. Run their full arcs. We don't have the um, the sticking power, <laughs> <laughs> or the um, tenacity to get to this, you know, season of yeah, whatever this is. This but. will be the season where we introduce uh, guest stars because we've got nothing else to do to yeah. boost the ratings. Yeah, and um, you know, suddenly veer wildly like off brand. Yeah, for the show. Yeah. Um, this is the season where um, Ross tells Rachel that they were on a break. <laughs> <laughs> this is about midway through season two of Twin Peaks when um, uh, David Lynch leaves. Yeah, the, half the writing team leave yeah. Twin Peaks. So, so see if you can spot the exact moment that we jump the shark <laughs> yeah. in, this, in this episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what's happening. So. Uh, beer of the day, or beer of the week, is the Rogue Hop New Zealand Pils- uh, Pilsner by Harrington Breweries. Uh, we haven't actually talked about this yet. Uh, no, well, like, even off camera, I mean. No. I talked about what? The beer? Yeah, the beer. Yeah, no, we Usually haven't. we We've do. Just Usually, been like, it. yeah, yeah, before we... Yeah. Uh, which is a good beer. I'm enjoying this beer. This this is uh, I'm enjoying it actually from, from Christchurch. Harrington mm. Breweries down mm. there in, in Christchurch, who do a good range of craft beer. And it's... They do. Uh, it's it's really nice. It's really nice, even even it. though it's you, you know. And, and again, we've talked about this before about how we're not into hugely hoppy beers. Mm. Um, this is really nice. Like it, 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 it tastes hoppy, but it's it's good. Mm. And as far as craft beers go, it's it's uh, lighter on the alcohol content side, so it's only five percent, yeah. which is you know about the same as a standard beer. Normally, craft mm. beers are sort of seven odd percent. Yeah, in around there. But it's uh, I'm enjoying it. I'm liking it too. I'm it's it. really easy to drink. It's smooth. It's yeah. really smooth. Yeah, which is nice. So on the only scale that matters, Anthony, uh, what, what are you giving uh, the uh, Harrington Brewery, the Rogue Hop? I'm thinking an 8. Yeah, I'd be... I'd or be, a 7.5. I'd, I'd be up there. I'd, I'd give it an 8 as well. Yeah. It's a, it's yeah. a really enjoyable really enjoyable drink. I see on the on the packaging That's here really that nice. they are the New Zealand bre- uh, Champion Brewery for 2012. Oh, wow. But uh, nice. obviously we've come a little bit late to the party. Uh, but yeah, I, have, I, yeah. I'm really enjoying it. So thank you, Harrington yeah. Breweries. Cheers, Harrington. Awesome. Um, so, let's crack on. All right. Uh, let's crack on with what's on top. Okay, so what's on top? What's on top, Anthony? Uh, what's on top? Uh, James has a man bun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. It's, uh, not even, it's not even a man bun. It's a man butt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, I mean. There's, you know, it's, it's the undercut. The undercut You can make all the excuses in the world. The undercut doesn't, doesn't like doesn't add to a great bun like there's not no. the, the volume there like uh james is bitterly self-defensive about his man bun i it's just my slow morph into the ultimate hipster it is that's that's what i'm going for yeah watch for the stubble <laughs> watch you know drinking craft beer yeah beginnings of a man bun it's it's happening you'll have your e-scooter soon Ooh, here's a good idea yeah an e-scooter yeah I like that idea. You drive to work every day. Good. <laughs> <laughs> they go in the in the pouring rain. They actually go really fast. I, I for the first time uh, two days ago. I uh, well now by the time you listen to this podcast, it would have been about four or five days. Yeah. Um, I rode an e scooter for the first time. Mm. They go really quick. Okay, so the top speed of the particular e scooter that I was driving was um, sixty five kilometers per hour. Jesus. Uh, which maybe isn't legal, so maybe I haven't shouldn't have said <laughs> But um, very quick. And I uh, had a quick go, and it was very fun. It was very fun to ride on. I'd be worried the whole time that you'd come off. At 65 kilometers an hour riding oh, I, a scooter. Oh, I never went that quick. That, like, I never I mean, went that quick. Because, like, you know when you jump on, like, a, a just, like, a, a standard scooter, and, and they only do, like, what, 50? Um, mm. 
it feels quick. Like yeah, when you're yeah, on there, it really feels quick. quick. Like yeah. I can only imagine it's even like you feel that even more being on a scooter. You do, you do, because you're you're just standing there and it's a narrow standing area and um yeah, and you and going around corners like you have to take quite a wide berth. Yeah, yeah. Going around, you feel like you're on a barge on ice. So yeah, it's like I, wide, I, I, yeah, yeah, I'd be so worried. I'd be Keeping so worried. balance and and trying to keep the speed consistent enough. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, on to Uncanny Valley. So uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's that's all we had. Thirty second waffle. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, so for our for our what's on top this week, um, we we're gonna change it up a little bit, and we're we're actually going to do a bit of an article for our what's on top this week. <clears throat> yeah. And this is this is something that uh, um, apologies uh, apologies if I'm sniffing away. I think I'm coming down with a cold or something. Uh, but this this is something that was actually requested by our Discord users. Um, I think because they think this will be very funny, because you know why would they think that? Um, because we're old men. Who uh, just like to rent at cloud? Speak for yourself. <laughs> no, you're right though. Yeah. You're even worse than I am. <laughs> uh, so we're. Uh, <laughs> so what's on top? Just this tell week? us how you really feel. What's on top this week? I, I will. So what's on top this week? We're we're <laughs> already into month four, right? We've only just arrived in April. We're in month four. There's already been a list published. A list. I can't even speak. A list published of the uh, top English slang terms you need to know. For 2019. Well, better late than never. That's right. Uh, late to the party. So, so you need to know these. Okay. For for 2019. To make sure that we're down with the kids. Yes, that's right. Down um, with the youngins. The youngins. Uh, yep. Hit so, cool. so I've I've read this article. So what I'm going to do is is there are obviously ten slang terms on here. Mm-hmm. Anthony hasn't seen this article. So so what we're going to do no, is I'm going to go through here, Anthony, and I'm going to give you these slang terms. Okay. And I want you to tell me what you think they mean. Oh. <laughs> okay. To show how hip and down you are okay. with the cool kids. Okay? okay. So, <clears throat> word number one. Stan. <laughs> uh, oh, that's not 2019. Apparently, it's in the top list of most used slang terms in 2019. It's an old term. I know, but apparently it's in the okay. top used terms. Okay. So Stan. Who what was is, what is was this Stan article mean? written by someone who's okay, a, a, a youth. <laughs> mm. Someone who's yeah. I, uh, well, apparently I was reading this and apparently they're saying that it's it's what do you call it stuff that has been uh, collated, you know, from messaging and posts oh, and stuff okay. like that for 2019. Okay. So, so this might not be what like necessarily kids are saying all the time, but it's mm. it's stuff that people are using in posts. It's probably that older sort of people stuff, who have just that caught time. on to that's it. right. Yeah. So, yeah. Stan, what what is, what is Stan? Uh, standing is when you um you support a, a be it a person or a band or it's a way if, for like and Stan actually originates from uh, the Eminem song. Correct called stan which is a song uh, as we all know about um a letter that's written to a uh, fan mail written to eminem and he yep. sings about it and talks about it and it's about a overly way obsessive way way fan. obsessive fan yeah. yeah correct i think i think you get double Thanks. points for that one because you even Thanks. explained the origin which is 100 percent correct the word found its origin in eminem's 2000 song stan which follows the letters of an obsessive fan named stan who eventually drives his car into a lake at the song's climax. From there, the word Stan was born to describe a die-hard fan of a celebrity. There you cool. go. Well done. Right. Uh, now, I hadn't heard of the next two. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, here we go. So, number two. Full send. Two words. Full Ooh, send. I haven't heard of this one. <laughs> uh, right, so, so have a guess at what you think full, full send. send might be. Is it when... Hmm. You're on your phone. You're sending a message to someone. Mm. It could be someone you know or like or something. Mm. And you, instead of just saying, you know, instead of continuing the conversation in a mm. natural way, you say how you really feel. Like you go all out. You just tell them exactly what. That, that's pretty close. Oh, is that's it? pretty close. Oh. So borrowed from ski lingo, apparently. Okay. This phrase defines the moment 
when you head fearlessly into a controlled, dangerous situation. Ah. So it's leaked over into everyday use and essentially refers to not caring about the consequences and going all out. Ah, go, so to go full send. So that yeah. situation would so work. So that yeah, situation yeah. would work. Okay, cool. Number three, wig. Oh, I know wig. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So wig is, um, well, we already know wig is from wig snatched. Mm-hmm. So um, when you snatch someone's wig, it's when it's it's a drag. It's actually a drag term. So um, okay. with uh, in drag, you have a wig, obviously, and when it's snatched, that's a that's a out there sort of controversial sort of moment. Like um, if you snatch someone's wig, you have it's not exposed them but it's something similar to that it's sort of like exposing someone or it's a it's a like a okay yeah okay yeah so <clears throat> wig this is used when something happens that is so crazy or exciting that your wig flies off it yeah. doesn't matter whether you actually wear a wig or not saying wig or oh my god wig flew in response to something scandalous is an appropriate response yeah so in drag it's like a whole it's a reveal it's yes. a big okay yeah yeah. Number four, you should know this. Producer Caroline will know this. T. T. So T <laughs> is um, it's basically um, uh, sort of like gossip or or some. It's like it's like the dirt on someone, and if you spill the tea, it's like you're you're having a you know you're you're revealing the gossip on someone or. or or maybe having, you know, piling on to someone kind of thing. Mm. And yeah, yeah. If there's some hot gossip circulating the scene, then you can refer to it as tea. Mm. It's appropriate in both inquiring about the gossip, so what's the tea, or telling somebody about gossip, spilling the tea, and it's a single word response to some serious drama. Yes. There you go. Well done. Five. Snatched. Oh, okay. So snatched is a bit like, um, it's the whole wig thing again. So if you're snatched, wig snatched, it's like you're being caught out or revealed or um, found out. It's like a, it's like a snatched. You know, it's it's a sassy term for someone being exposed. Okay, snatched. Uh, where on fleek used to rule the roost, snatched ah. has quickly swooped in to steal the throne, referring to looking fashionable or on point. Ah, okay. This term is a snappy, snappy compliment reserved for only the most stylish of pals. Sorry, so I was wrong. I was so wrong I assume, that. you know, that's snatched or you look... Yeah. 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 Okay. Six. Now, this is one that it's interesting for me. It's interesting that it appears in 2019 because this is slang that I've used whenever I was younger. So, sus. Oh, interesting. Yeah, same here. Yeah. So, sus is um, short for suspect. Hmm. So, if, if a situation seems um, untoward or um, suspect. Hmm. Like, if a situation is... Um, if something seems sus, it's when you have trepidations hmm. about that scenario. Yeah. yeah. Derived from the word suspect, you can whip this gem out when one of your friends is acting a little shady. Whether you believe they're hiding something or they're displaying a character pool, you can tell them they're being sus. Okay. Well, that situation's a that's bit an sus. Old, that's an that's old real term. old. Yeah, it's really old. Woke. <laughs> Number seven. Woke. So woke is when you... Um, this gets a lot uh, used by a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's when someone is enlightened, uh, usually socially. So if you're socially enlightened, so you... Um, You've had the shades pulled off, and you mm. you're very knowledgeable about uh, information that is usually suppressed. So you've basically, I mean, basically, it boils down to being um, educated about something that is not common knowledge. Yeah, this particular term refers to being very aware of current affairs. Those who have a firm understanding of the reality around them will come to terms with the fact that their previous beliefs may have been false can be referred to as woke. Yeah, waking up. Yeah. Yeah. Eight. I think we even used this on the podcast. Flex. (laughs) (laughs) So flex is when you're... um, It's uh, I'm pretty sure that originates from rappers. Um, It's when you're um, showing off something so you're either you're you're flexing so flexing comes from um bodybuilding as well mm. 
you know, when you flex your muscles, mm. it means you're showing off what you have. Mm. So flexing can be, uh, for rappers, it could be flexing bling or mm. cars or money or it could be anything. Flexing status, it's a status thing. Um, yeah, yep. yeah, and that's flexing. Uh, the slang term flexing actually describes the act of showing off your valuables or lavish lifestyle in a very non-humble way. For example, the act of certain influences very arrogant. flexing on Instagram. Yeah, very arrogant. Nine. Left on red. Left on red. Left ne- on red. I've never heard of that one. Ah. Interesting. Do you want to guess what left on red might mean? Um, See, I thought this was left unread. It's not. It's left oh, on red. Okay. Is it? Um, is it when? So- is it like a red hearing? Is it like when someone's being like? So it's misled? red as in to read something. Left on red. <sighs> not red the color oh 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 no sorry sorry okay so it's when i uh, know i get it now so it's when um someone messages you mm. and you <laughs> d- you don't even go into the message you don't even open the message so that it shows that you haven't read the message so it's like when for example uh maybe you hooked up with someone and then they message you and then you don't it's left on red because you don't want to communicate with that person. You're you're way. you're yeah. pretty close. So so left on red. Uh, oh no, on, sorry. It's when they've read it and then you haven't replied. Yes, yeah, that's yeah, the one. Yeah. yeah so sorry. so originating from the yeah. re- read uh, receipts on iMessage that shows when the other person has seen your text. Yeah. Getting left on red refers to somebody reading your text and not replying to it. It's perhaps yeah. one of the biggest insults of our time. <laughs> oh, wow. Now this one I haven't heard of. Um, Is this ten? This is number 10. So you've done pretty well so far. I'm, I'm really impressed. Uh, this one I haven't heard of. Collecting receipts. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I know this. So It's because you're hip and cool, Anthony. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't heard uh, this one. Collecting receipts is when you... Cre- it's basically um, modern day Sherlock Holmes. So you've collected uh, evidence of something that someone else has done. Mm. so it's like um you know when you say i have receipts so it's like um you've collected um damage on someone or you've collected evidence on Mm. someone that they've done something Mm. so people quite often say like um this person's done this i have receipts Mm. and you know and and it means that basically they have cold hard evidence of the work that this person's done pretty good this describes the practice of collecting screenshots photos or videos to prove your point Akin to a lawyer presenting the evidence court, you can pull up your receipts to dispel any doubt in the yeah. case. It's very ca- well done. Thank you. That's, yeah, that's oh, that was like a solid. Like, that, wow. that was a solid. What nine out of 10? nine out of ten? Yeah, I think there was only that's, one that I was like. Oh, that's what? pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I would have done as well. I think I would have gone for a solid about eight, seven, or eight. I, oh, yeah. I would have known, which is still really um, good. The, there was a couple of, like collecting receipts. I wouldn't have known. I haven't oh, heard that yeah. term. Mm. Uh, I was interested to see things in there like sus. Like I'm like sus is really old. Sus is really old. Yeah. Like something being sus or a situation being sus or like like yeah. if I if I talk to my brothers for example who you know we're sort of all of an age mm. if if I said to them oh that's pretty sus that they'd, they'd understand what, what I was talking yeah. about like you yeah. know uh, I guess these things are quite cyclical as well yeah. they come back and, Okay you know. so so just to, to expand on this a little bit okay give me some of your favorite slang from when you were younger. Oh, man. <laughs> I use see I use slang now to be um, well, ironic. Yeah. <laughs> at one point it was ironic, but people say that like I'm just being ironic. But it gets to a point where you can no longer claim for it to be ironic because where, you but use it, it so often. It, it actually then starts to sink into your own lexicon. It, it does. It, it's exactly like, what it, yeah, I started yeah, doing that with yeah. on fleek oh, or on point. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd be yeah. like, oh, you know, that's on point mm. or on fleek, like mm. to. Take I'm surprised the piss. on point wasn't on there. Yeah, well, apparently it's dropped yeah. out of favor. But like, I I used to use it to take the piss out of yeah. you know people who used on fleek or on point. Mm. But um, it became a thing. Like I I found yeah. myself suddenly going, oh, that's on point, or that's mm. like you know, I'm like, it it weirdly becomes part of your lexicon. Yeah. But but go on, give me give me uh give me some of your favorite slang from when you were younger. So I I like the real cheesy like real naff stuff. Like yeah. I love saying like that things are rad red yeah because it's such a 90s surfer. radical I love, dude i i love the 90s surfer surfer dude terms red like yeah. red and gnarly like gnarly. gnarly so funny i love that see that was my teenage years so like yeah. it, 
I mean, we used gnarly. that not even like ironically. Like no, it was when yeah. something's gnarly. Yeah. Yeah. Red or gnarly. Um, I I love mint. Oh, mint, mint was yeah. another good one. Something's yeah. mint. Yeah. Oh, I use sick a lot. Like, sick. Yeah. I say, man, that's sick. And it's sick. <laughs> oh, that's mint. That, yeah. That yeah. munted was another one. <laughs> munted. That's really munted. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. That's a good one. Actually, do you know what? Funnily enough, I, I, I was sort of thinking about this as I was going through this. Like, while we had slang, obviously, mm. whenever we were younger, you know, it's what all the hip and cool kids said. Um, I don't think we had as much slang. Like, I think I think kids now, like... They they have a lot of slang, and I think I think yeah. that's that's that probably comes from, probably from like YouTubing, like yeah. you, you know that the sort internet, of stuff. Yeah, the internet, shared collective. Yes, yeah. shared, shared collective stuff. Um, whereas um, I don't know that we really had that much. Like there mm. was stuff that you you yeah you would use terms like mint or munted or mm. you know whatever munted munter. Yeah. Somebody's a munter. Yeah. Um, or you know that sort of. But th- there wasn't a huge amount. Like I don't no. I don't remember like having specific slang for things like gossip or people like looking good like no, you'd be like that's no. mint like mint yeah. like covered everything mm. anything that was mm. good whether you looked good or mm. something was cool or like it was mint mm. or just an exclamation well, of I cool think it's was worth, like mint i think it's but, worth yeah. pointing out too um most of that list you just pointed out comes from drag culture mm. which is now a, like obviously a really big thing now and i think mm. with the internet uh which is really cool is that this cultures have been more sort mm. of you can be more educated and, mm. and all that kind of thing. And, and yeah, a lot of it comes from that, which is really yeah. interesting. Yeah. That, like a lot of what, like wigs and snatched and all that. That's, but the, that's the weird culture, one I found, like, for really example, cool. like one being used all the time is Stan or standing. Like I'm like, yeah. Yeah. like it, it literally, it comes from a 2000 song. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, which, you know, as I was sort of sitting there thinking, I, my last year of high school was the year 2000. And I'm sitting there going, that's nearly 20 years ago. Yeah. It's been nearly 20 years since yeah. I've been out of high school. Um, Two decades. And that, you know, that's when that album dropped. Well, the equivalent, the equivalent would be you in, the, in your year of high school, mm. in the year 2000, mm. um, dropping uh, Groovy. Groovy, yeah. Well, 20 years back. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. You know, because, I mean, 1980. Yeah. yeah. It's the hangover from that. Yeah. Whole, yeah. I love, I love. It's the equivalent. I, it's so yeah. weird. I love whenever yeah. you do, like, um, really old shows, like a... Uh, uh, a good one is like West Side Story and like you read all yeah. the slang in there and it's the yeah. same with um like Greece and yeah. stuff like that where they use all of that really terrible you know 50s slang yeah. like you know bad, eh? um daddy-o and like yeah. you know yeah. cool daddy-o and like all that sort yeah. of stuff you're like yeah. oh and it's, it's just so jarring it's, it's real cringe it's <laughs> like, really cringe yeah like yeah. um cringe is another one that again like um I started using ironically again yeah. being like oh cringe why would you say cringe yeah like, and now i find myself saying it all the time yeah because it does sort of cringe culture is huge on the internet now because yeah. there's there's this whole thing of like subreddit of yeah cringe. subreddit of cringe yeah. and, and then going through posts and people uploading things that will make you physically cringe, cringe. Yeah. yeah yeah and it's, it does it's bizarre yeah. right like yeah. it's 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 funny like um when i read it actually i was i was expecting when i first read the article i was expecting to have no idea what most of the things on that article were and yeah. actually as i went through i was like oh no i understand that no yeah. I, I know that i know that i know that yeah um so well done nine out of Thank ten you. yeah so remember that next time you make fun of people for saying slang terms just remember you yeah. may be writing an article about it a couple of years <laughs> down the track, so, <laughs> when all yeah. the kids are saying something that you don't understand yeah exactly. and you know do you know what's yeah. really funny and, and, and you know um it may be harder for some of our long, younger listeners to to identify this with this but the really weird thing with slang is um you pick these things up without knowing how you pick them up mm. like and schools are really great places for that because obviously you're all hanging out together and all of that sort of stuff and you pick up you pick up slang really mm-hmm. quickly. You just always seem to know what's going on. Yeah. Like, you know, what's the latest thing? What's what's mm-hmm. happening? Um, and all of a sudden you leave school and all of a sudden you feel so disconnected from, yeah. from that world. Yeah. And, and you'll be like, oh, no, I'm still cool. And you'll come back. And all of a sudden kids are saying stuff that are like, you're like, what? What? Yeah. what? What's that? Like, no, what? Like, and all yeah. of a sudden you're out of that loop. It's really weird. Like, I, yeah. I remember, um, you've just reminded me, I remember when I was about 10 years old 
and uh, we were on uh, MSN Messenger. <laughs> now, that's an artifact uh, for you <laughs> younger listeners. That's an artifact. It's the of... grandfather of Messenger. Like, it's it is, what we used it is. before. Yeah. Um, I remember MSN Messenger. E- MSN Messenger. And I remember yeah. the first time, and I was talking to someone on there, and um, I was with a friend of mine. Um, and this person said to me, LOL, in uppercase oh. letters. And yeah. for the very first time, and it was the very first time I'd been exposed to this. And you got to remember when I was 10 years old, this would have been about 2002. Mm. So uh, 2002 is, you know, yes, it would have been a long time ago. Yeah. And, um, and I said, what does that mean? Mm. And my friend next to me, Matt, he's like, don't you even know what that means? Mm. Don't you even know what that means? And, you know, and I, it took about like 20 minutes mm. for me to find out. And then I found out it was laugh out mm. loud. Yeah. Yeah. It's, really strange looking back and thinking this generation yeah. will always be exposed to these sort of well, yeah, what it I, was when that short term yeah. language was first used well what what i found really bizarre and, and, and again just reminded me um obviously because i'm a dinosaur i was around for you know you know before texting was a thing or mm. i mean msn MSN Messenger was used before most people had phones or yeah. texted. So it was our original form of instant messaging. And and it was mind-blowing at the time that you could send somebody else a message that they'd get immediately and yeah. they could reply immediately. Like, that yeah. was mind-blowing. Um, but I remember it, it was my generation that, you know, started with phones and started texting yeah. and all of that sort of stuff. So, you know, when you mock me for, you know, messaging and stuff, I'm like, we started this. Don't you know, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But I remember at one point there was a real concern because everybody truncated everything. All words mm. whenever you were text uh, texting was always, it was always shortened. Everything was shortened. Generally, mm. you got rid of vowels. Mm. Like, vowels mm. generally went Actually, out the just window. just for background on this, because um, you've got to remember old cell phones, you had 1, 2, 3, 4, yeah, 5, yeah. 6, 7, 8, 9. So, um, to write, um, you would have three... I mean, cause we have to actually so explain to write, this. to write C, yeah. you have to click the number 2 three times yeah. to get the letter C. Yeah. 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 Once for A, twice for B, yeah. three times for C. So, everything so took much longer than actually having actually, an actual touch now people. do you know bizarrely it's i can i can fast. still actually message yeah. faster on an old phone yeah. than i can on a touch screen because phone. you had haptic feedback from the buttons yeah you did yeah. and yeah. and and bizarrely and this this was yeah. the thing um majority of teenagers of my generation could text without looking at your phone yep so yep. so you could be having another it was great at school it was great at school you could without type without looking without looking yeah and and yep. it was really easy and you yep. got you got really, really good at it. Yeah. Um, yeah. You but, guys will never know that. No, but we, we shortened a, yeah. everything. Everything yeah. was shortened. And, mm. and every there was like big concern at the time that kids' English was going to be like terrible because yeah. everything, yeah, everybody literate. was like shortening yeah. everything. I remember that. And there was yeah. a whole argument about whether text speak, it became known as text speak, whether text speak should be acceptable in examinations and stuff like that. And mm. because, you know, that's the way everyone was going. And, and bizarrely now, whenever I receive messages and you get messages from younger people and, and stuff, everybody writes in full sentences. And this is, yeah. this is because I think of the way that sort of predictive works. So you're either yeah. using predictive or you're using, you know, your a phone makes keyboard. suggestions on yeah. you and you're using a full keyboard. Autocomplete. Yeah. Autocomplete. Mm. So, so you actually get full words like text speak really isn't a thing now. Like if yeah. you sent somebody a yeah. message in text speak, they'd kind of be like, what is this weird... Like, Why is this person yeah. so illiterate? But what I also loved was a lot of that stuff came from gaming. So yeah, um, the way I came across like a lot of terms that were used in early texting and stuff like that was from gaming. It was from, you know, playing mm. games like uh, World of Warcraft and, you know, all that sort of mm. stuff, which is where I learned terms like AFK or BRB yeah. or, you know, all of those mm. kinds of things, you know, and as you said, like lol yeah. lmao you know all of those kind of terms i learned from gaming and, and the reason mm. that people did it in gaming was because obviously again you were doing stuff so chat had to be really truncated and mm. quick so so you know keyboard chat had to be really truncated and quick mm. and and you sort of had to have really easy ways of letting people know what was happening mm. um mm. So it's, it's really bizarre. Like It yeah. is. It's very strange. So seeing as this is our 20th episode and we're, we're talking about slangs, uh, slangs, slangs, slang mm-hmm. and, and sayings, um, I was just thinking, actually, you know, it's it's been a really 
weird sort of 20 hours of this podcast <laughs> so is, we we, we this 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 podcast what has changed <laughs> well it's changed so much it in has. the 20 hours that we've it been has. doing this podcast yeah so if you go right back to our very early podcasts mm. our very early podcasts were literally just an hour of Anthony and i sitting down and talking about a subject yeah like that that was it that's that's all we did we didn't and, and I don't think it was until we got to sort of episode seven or somewhere yeah. around there that we were kind of like, no, we need a structure that's kind of going to work with mm. us. And, you know, what is it that we're actually wanting to do? That sort of stuff. Mm. Because it's like, while we can talk forever, it's mm. it's quite difficult mm. to come up with a topic every week that you're going to spend an hour mm. talking on. James is spilling the tea right now. <laughs> I am spilling the tea. Uh, and so we, we came up with a much more usable sort of... Um, structure for us and in yeah. a way that you guys could be more involved in what we were doing uh and that sort of stuff but it, it reminds me of a lot of the stuff that we used very early on or that sort of stuff or um slogans that we kind of tried to yeah to, to get integrate. into what yeah. we were doing and, yeah. and the one that seems to have survived is the only scale that matters and yeah. and actually for those of you that haven't listened to early podcasts this actually comes because <laughs> we were talking about something and Anthony decided that we were going to use a scale from zero to 10. I can't even remember. So this. you were going on about using a scale from zero to 10. Yeah. And I was like, why are we use, like most people use a scale from like one to 10. And so we'd yeah. added the zero so we could now no, so that you can have zero, ten. you can have like yeah, a zero point one. But you or, never yeah. see in scales like zero to ten. No, you, you have don't. like one to you ten, don't. like yeah. rank one to ten, you know, whatever or whatever. It, it's zero to ten. So this mm. is where the whole idea of the mm. you know the only scale that matters because mm. it was a unique scale. I'm I mean I'm obsessed with ranking things as well. Yes, and, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Like I mean I think that comes from growing up with um, music journalism. Yeah. So. Um, Music is something that's so incredibly um, subjective. Hmm. And I grew up reading reviews where they would put an incredibly objective number yeah. attached to the music. Yeah. And uh, a big websites like Pitchfork Media who would rate things a uh, famously something out of 10.0. Yeah. So like it would be a, a six point eight or a, yeah, 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 yeah. So I think you know this whole scaling and review culture, yep. which was very recent. But um, what yeah. I love too is that that we generally tend to rank things at a very <laughs> like like that the, the scale has no meaning at all. Like so no, so like no. we are ranking beer, for example, just based on how much we like it. Like it's not yeah, even yeah, like it's no, not even yeah, based on yeah. any like you know legitimate scale. Wait, what do you uh, mean not legitimate? So this is why it became the only scale that matters. Yeah. But the the other the other thing was that uh, what else did we have very early on? Uh, the Wikipedia of podcasts brought yes. to you by yeah. uh, world famous nobodies. Yeah. That was that was another one. Yeah. Uh, we had uh, there was another one that was on the the tip yeah, of my tongue I'm there. To remember. Uh, the only scale that matters. It feels like so long ago. Uh, it really it. was. Yeah. It, it, it's yeah. bizarre. Like, we, we really weren't sure that this was going to take off or, mm. or what was going to happen. Mm. We were kind of like, oh, well, you know, mm. just faff around and, and mm. do some stuff and, and see what matters. The Wikipedia of podcasts. That was that was the okay. other one. Esoterica, the Wikipedia of podcasts. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I think that, that probably brings yeah. us to an end uh, of, yeah. of what's on top. So on to... Well, actually, before we move on to... <laughs> Before we move on to Uncanny Valley, I just want to say I realised... James did an oopsie. Uh, I, had a, I had a senior moment and said the same thing twice. This is what happens when you get old like me mm. and there's no script. <laughs> we we could have... We, I just want to point out, we could have edited this out. We could. But because we're all about transparency here yes. at Esoterica HQ... Yes. We have signs around the room that say... Um, we have motivational posters that say things <laughs> like... <laughs> transparency and don't do evil and just, just do it and just hang in there yeah <laughs> <laughs> just hang in there Motiv motivational posters infuriate me they yeah, infuriate yeah. me yeah. they're another one of those things we'll, we'll have to save that for the the second list of three things that infuriate me but yeah. they, you know infuriate each other but like th that's one of the motivational posters i hadn't thought about sorry oh, i hadn't thought about that um like being motivated <laughs> No, I hadn't thought no. about that. Just hang in I there. I should just and motivate myself. It's, it's a myself. cat. I should yeah. just hang in there. Yeah. Now that I've seen that picture, oh, I, I feel, feel yeah, I feel great. I actually, I actually was really tempted when I first started teaching. If I ever got my own room, and mm -hmm. I, I haven't got my own room, you see, but if I ever got my own room, 
to frame and hang around demotivational posters all oh, around all around yeah. my wall and just see how long it takes people to realize like yeah. what's actually on them because yeah. i fully don't reckon people actually read them no yeah no it's been- the students do but the teachers don't yeah uh so anyway so wait no what was your so what did you repeat for i said i said uh the wikipedia podcasts twice which is so Wikipedia of Which you. is so Wikipedia of me. Which is so adorably I, I, Wikipedia bu- Yes, that's you. right. I'm building an argument by just saying the same thing twice. Yeah. 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 See, I know twice as much because I said the same thing uh, twice. Did you cite that source? Or? No, you don't cite anything. <laughs> Every time you go to Esoterica. Wikipedia, <laughs> citation needed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Actually, maybe, that's, maybe, that's, maybe that should be on our first piece of merch. Esoterica. Citation needed. <laughs> That's good. I like that, actually. I really like that. There you that. go. Coming soon. I really like that. All right. So let's move on to Uncanny Valley. And we're and again, being our 20th episode, we're, we're flipping the script a little bit. Uh, <laughs> like there's a script. Um, like we're, we're, Bless. We're, we're flipping the idea a little bit. And this time you have an article. I do. It's 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 not me this time. You I don't mean article. to throw you off. I, I, yeah, I, I haven't actually... Seen this article, which is which is a weird place for me to be in. It's Normally, this, I'm like, I've got something for you. Yeah, no, thing. I've got something for James. And this is, sorry, Excellent. excuse me, this is on a cellular device. I'm going to open this up. That's all right. Well, you know. Just wait while we'll I... just wait oh, while you, you, you know, check your messages. Yeah, this is actually <laughs> Caroline's phone, so I'm having to work it out. Oh, here we go. Okay. Yep, I found it. All right. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I want to do something a little bit different okay. for this article. So yes. I... I want us to be really. <laughs> this is this is already starting poorly. Uh, no reactions. Oh, okay, good. Okay. Well, oh, no, you can have All reactions. Right. All right. But just be sort of. Hmm. Okay. Be. <laughs> <laughs> this worries me. This okay. worries me how much you're setting this so up. So anything where you you have a gut because I know you're like me do I have to put my teacher face on and, and just, you need to put just, your teacher face on react. and and okay. if you're anything like me you're going to have a visceral reaction to this <laughs> okay so what I need you to do every yes. time you hear something that's going to make you want to scream or, okay. or okay. interject yes. just go hmm okay 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 go hmm as okay. if All right. okay uh, I, uh, I, I okay. hear you I hear you okay. that's, that's right. maybe a valid point we're, okay we're, maybe a valid point uh oh yeah <laughs> so um the hang on hang on hang on the headline is, and this is from deadstate.org, mm-hmm. anti-vaxxer warrior mum, if vaccines are so great, why aren't they mentioned in the Bible? Hmm. <laughs> okay. Okay. As someone who keeps a fairly close eye on internet quackery, this Tuesday marks the first time I've ever come across Brittany Cara's content. After watching a video ma- mashup, of her put together by a pro-vaccine Facebook page, I had to double-check to make sure what I was viewing wasn't satire. Hmm. As far as I okay, <laughs> as far as I can tell, Kara is the real deal. According to her bio on Amazon, Kara is an author, certified master NLP practitioner. In brackets, go ahead and Google that. Hypnothera- hip- hypnotherapist. Hmm. Okay. Nutrition coach and mother. The bio adds that she specializes in teaching people how to detoxify their lives through cleansing and superfoods. Hmm, okay. She specializes in spewing some of the most bizarre anti-vaxxer rhetoric I've seen yet. In an edited video posted by The Real Truther, Kara offers a never-before-heard theory on why vaccines are bad. Hmm, okay. God didn't give any hint of them in the Bible. Hmm, okay. <laughs> I just decided to just <clears throat> Google what the Bible says about vaccines. And, but shouldn't you, if you follow the Bible, shouldn't you know what's in the Bible? Why would you need to Google that? If you're a, no, no, I mean, if you're a, okay. No, sorry, I'm going off track. Kara says at the outset of the video, there's nothing in the Bible that talks about vaccines. According to a theory, if God is all knowing... Why isn't there any inkling of talk in the Bible about these things called vaccinations coming into being later to save people? If that was really God's plan and they're so amazing, then why isn't it in there at all? 
internet fear mongering about the chemicals and everything had quite the heyday from around 2012 to 2016 and still enjoys a fairly large presence on the web and social media. That's understanding it, by the way. It's at its mm-hmm. worst. It's at its, yeah, mm-hmm. by far the worst. While health gurus like the Food Bible, uh, sorry, the Food Babe, made way for the next level pseudoscience marketing of Gwyneth Paltrow's goop. Smaller satellite health bloggers still try to market claims that have zero scientific merit to any leftover news feed scrollers who will listen. Kara's strange blend of Christianity, Bible, literism, and wellness, pseudoscience, has quite a few people paying attention. Many of her videos have tens of thousands of views each. All we can do is hope her kids grow up healthy. Oh. That last sentence. So, so sorry. <clears throat> this person is is ridiculing this other person, or this person is agreeing with her. I think they're very they're ridiculing Thank the last the last sentence. I mean, that. the last sentence they, is literally, uh, "We hope her kids grow up healthy," which is, I think, the oh, yeah. like I. <laughs> I love yeah. that it's like, I love that mm. it's like, okay, firstly, I love that they're like, you know, people, you know, peddling the suit, you know, pseudoscience worry about vaccine, mm. vaccines hurting your children. And that's exactly what it is. Pseudoscience. This the pseudoscience worry the vaccine harms your children. No, no. You know, that's just silly. Mm. What we really should be focusing on is the fact that vaccines aren't mentioned in the Bible. Like, yeah. <sighs> she calls herself out, though. I mean, the thing, the, the thing that for me. Okay. Next time you go into the hospital, next time you go to the hospital, don't have anesthetic. Pretty sure that's not mentioned in the Bible. No. Pretty sure surgery isn't mentioned in the Bible, nor no. are antibiotics, no. uh, nor are pretty much anything to do with modern medicine, nor are cars, uh, nor are secondary schools or yeah. universities or, uh, you know, anything to do with that. Uh, nor is interior home heating or flushing toilets or anything else like that. So no. get rid of all of that stuff. If that's where you're going to go, go, it's not mentioned in the Bible. That was part of God's plan for us, having a flushing toilet. He would have written about it in the Bible. You, yeah. you know, he would have said, Jesus then went and used the bidet after flushing his, you know, the royal throne. Like, like, yeah. what? Oh. Yeah. She mentions, um, she Googled to see if vaccines were mentioned in the Bible, which I find really interesting for someone who is a Bible worshipper, not a Bible literalist. Or... Yeah. So, so a Bible literalist, for those of you that don't know, means that they they believe literally everything that is in the Bible. Yeah. So so they believe and and you know, forgive me if I'm slightly wrong on some of these things. Like I might be slightly wrong on some of the numbers, but uh, you know, um, I'm pretty sure. Uh, it be- means they believe that literally a hundred thousand people, that's it, get into heaven. That, uh, what do you call it, wearing blended fabrics, eating uh, shellfish or pork is a mortal sin, which means you go straight to hell, by the way. There's no forgiveness mm. um, for that. That adulterers, uh, female adulterers, should be stoned to death. Mm. Um, you literally believe that Adam and Eve is a thing, even though we know that if you're that closely related to people, because, you know, we all talk about Adam and Eve, but what happened to Adam and Eve's children? So Adam and Eve had Mm. two children, Cain and Abel, for memory. It's been a long time. Uh, Cain and Abel. Cain killed Abel, for memory. And somehow we end up with the human race. I'm not I'm not quite sure how that works. Pretty sure you need more That's girls for that. That's a plot hole. That's a plot uh, hole. But we all That's know what hole. would happen if Adam and Eve are literally the only human beings on the planet, and somehow they beget everybody. There's some sister brother marrying going on there. Yeah, there is. There's a large amount of there's inbreeding. There's a lot of Confederate <laughs> there's, flag. There's, there's, pickup there's, truck. Oof. Leonard Skinner going on there. <laughs> you also believe that everybody drowned and that animals were saved because they were put in pairs of two 
yeah. onto an ark. Yeah. And we know from endangered species that one viable breeding pair of an animal, even under incredibly close supervision, help, everything else like that, usually means that that species is probably doomed. Yeah. Yeah. So so you... Noah and his family were saved. So, so not only do we get to Adam and Eve, right? And, okay, mm. let's say for some really weird reason, genetically we diversified mm. uh, up to that point. Noah saved Adam and Eve and his family. Again, lots of, lots of incest happening there in order to create the... the oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. Why do you do yeah. these things yeah. to me? So I have a question for you, James. Yes. If you believed in the Bible literally, mm-hmm. like word for word, I'm mm-hmm. not criticizing the Bible when I say this, but... Well, I'm not. I'm not. I mean... If you believed in everything the Bible said, yep, would you have read it first? Well, you would think so. Okay, so then why would you need to Google whether vaccines feature in the Bible if you believed in? But the surely, Bible, surely, like, even if you're not a Bible literalist, even if you're somebody that has a passing knowledge of Christianity, like in the same way that I have a passing knowledge of the Quran, mm. if you know what I mean. Pretty sure vaccines are probably not mentioned in the Quran either. Like, even if you have, no. if you have a passing knowledge mm. of, of holy texts, if you went to Sunday school at any point in your life, surely it'd be pretty self-evident that vaccines are not mentioned in the Bible. No. As a text that was written 1,600 odd years ago. Yeah, before modern science. Pretty sure they're not going to be mentioning vaccines. But you better Google it just to make sure. So, <laughs> pretty sure the Bible also doesn't mention atoms. So those don't no. exist either. No. Because that's not part of no. God's plan. So we've had the crossover now from uh, anti-vax and the Bible. That's happened. That's a thing that has happened. So everyone, we have to accept that now. That is a crossover. That is the crossover no one asked for. Um, so um, I know The Simpsons is at its like thirtieth season or something. There's a crossover that you haven't done yet that you could do. Uh, Family Guy. I know you guys are desperate for crossovers. Just it's a crossover. Um. Yeah. So that's where we're at now. Uh, 2019. That's where we're at. We're at uh, anti vaxxers and the Bible, and correlations. So, moving on from that, because I don't think there's anything yeah. else that can be said. You've broken me. Yeah, James that's, is broken. 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 I think we're broken. I can't, I'm you just, know, I can't be bothered. Just... That's it. Like, I'm done. I'm done. Like, if that's, if that's the level we're at now. <laughs> Did you see? If this, is you seen, the, if this is the new. Have you seen the meme that's been floating around for a while? That's like. <laughs> have you seen the meme? Have you seen the, the one, that, that one meme? That's really dank on the internet. Uh, on on the interweb, oh, I that think that you'll find Facebook. Uh, have you seen that that meme that's uh, <laughs> teenagers uh, in my generation sneaking out for shots, and it's got a picture of a whole heap of teenagers doing alcoholic shots, and then it's like teenagers these days sneaking out for shots, and it's got pictures of vaccines. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. That's really good. That's really good. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. So anyway, oh, um, Anthony. Yeah. If Anthony. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's move on. Right. Okay. Yep. Thirty second waffle. I think. I think that's. Yeah, I, think, I, I think. We, we, we've we've plowed that ground. Yeah. It's done. I think it's it's done. It's done. The problem we're talking about anti vaccination is that if you already believe that vaccinations are bad for you nothing we say or anyone's going to say is going to change your mind so on that note that is probably actually you know what i'm going to call it right now that is the last time that east Terica are ever going to talk about anti-vaccination unless something really horrible happens which is probably <laughs> like probably you, likely going to happen you mean like the measles outbreak and uh, like, the measles yeah, yeah. outbreak in christchurch. in christchurch in australia yeah. or new york city or um yeah What's already happened since our last podcast, by the way. Since yeah. the last time we talked about anti-vax, um, there have been outbreaks. Yeah. But they can't be related, so never mind. No, because, no, no. you know, it's nothing to do with that. Yeah. Um, okay, right, okay. 30-second waffle. Uh, I went first last time, so it's your turn. Oh, okay. Excellent. 
Cool. See, I remember these things. You do. Nice. Upstage hand, too. I know. Nice. Every now and then, I told you. Yep. Very good. Very good. And, okay. <laughs> it's for you. Cool. So this is from Juice Goblin. Oh. First time for Juice Goblin, I think. No. No, it's not. Isn't it? Okay. Um... Okay. Okay. Uh, why Comic Sans is mm-hmm. I unironically the best font? <laughs> Lol. Okay. <laughs> I have this. This is brilliant. Uh, Comic Sans is unironically the best font because uh, Exhibit A, uh, Apple actually used it primarily as their keynote speech font in the late 90s. So the mere fact that Steve Jobs used it in keynotes means that it's obviously a good font because why would Steve Jobs use a font that's bad or why would he do something that's bad? Uh, Comic Sans is the best font because it has survived decades. It's in Microsoft Word and has been the longest surviving font on that desktop operating software forever. And school and church newsletters all use it. Because it's quirky and it's fun. I hate it. It's different. I hate it's it. Cool. I have told my kids that if they ever submit an assignment to me in Comic Sans, it's an automatic fail. Good. I'm not even going to read it. Should be expulsion. Yeah. They should be it's in prison. Like disciplined. They should be in prison for that. Disciplined for using Comic Sans. They should go to jail. So it's the longest surviving. Is it even longer than like Times New Roman or like no. Arial or whatever? No. No. Well, no. I mean, fonts are a relatively new thing on computers. Mm. Fonts weren't really introduced until the um, Apple computers of the mid to late 80s. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and Microsoft started using them with Microsoft Word, which was software that could be installed on Apple computers. Yeah. Um, but it, it, Comic Sans became really popular in the mid 90s. Yeah, yeah, everyone used it. Every yeah. every person yeah. that printed their own thing yeah. used Comic Sans. Mid-90s, and because it was fun, it was the quirky, fun font. <sighs> yeah, look yeah. at us. We're not, we don't take yeah. ourselves so seriously. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. Apple used it. Remember that? Apple used it, unironically, in the late 90s. Disgusting. Yeah. Right, okay. Get out of here. All right. Along James. with along with Microsoft Clipart. Mr. Clippy. Mr. Clippy. Can I help you with that? I see you are trying to find a... Uh, a, a I see you're trying network. to navigate your way around our awful uh, software. Okay, so this is from Esoterica Superfan and Esoterica is great. This is a combination question. That's interesting. Is okay, this the question... What? Oh, corporal and capital punishment should be in schools. Whew. <laughs> um, It's me. Corporal and capital punishments should be um, not only in schools but rolled out across uh, society in general. Uh, children would be far better behaved in class if we could beat them regularly. The fear that is instilled um, in your teacher would enforce respect and enforce obedience capital punishment there are always people that do not deserve a place in the society and should be put down without uh hesitation um james mccaffrey just recited the wall by pink floyd (laughs) in 30 second waffle i'd like to say that another brick in the wall part two (laughs) i'd like to say that what do you call it None of those are my personal beliefs. But James like, you know. is the personal oh, inspiration right. for Morrissey and the Smiths yeah. in the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Capital punishment in schools. Oof. What are you going to do in a school that's going to... You're going to get the death penalty for? <laughs> you didn't hand your homework in. It's the death penalty for you. Good God. That's... Oof. That was dark. <laughs> Again, not my actual opinion. How can you have your pudding if you don't eat your meat? Discord, uh, Esoterica Superfan, again. Oh, I feel uncomfortable. Okay. Uh, Wearing wet socks is a much more pleasant experience than the dry alternative. (laughs) Okay, so... (laughs) Mm. Okay. Uh, mm. Okay. Wearing wet socks is akin to uh, being constantly reminded. You feel like you're wading in water. Is there anything more relaxing than walking along a beachfront 
ankle deep in water. So guess what? If you have wet socks, you feel that all the time. It's beautiful. Uh, and it's, I think it's constantly feeling like you have something going on in your feet, uh, which you don't, you don't usually have. It's so different. It's nice. I like it. It's a, that was so it's hard. A, that was the a, hardest one. Yeah, I love that you justified it by being like, it's a takeaway beach experience. You can, it anywhere is. Anywhere you go, you can feel like you're at the beach. Yeah. It's, oh, it's awful. There's nothing worse than having than wet having socks. Than having wet socks. That's so that, bad. Uh, <laughs> like, oh. I, I tell you, is it, we we answer the important issues. <laughs> we <laughs> do. Goodness me. Good God. Oh. Well done. I I would have struggled Cute. with that. that was really one. hard. I would have struggled with that one. God. All right. This is from Esoterica. Is great. <laughs> Disney. <laughs> Disney has run out of good movie ideas, so are just remaking good ones into live versions. We agree with that. I mean, it's true. <laughs> My answer to this is it's a hundred percent yes. They are. They've like think of the last good Disney movie that came out. I I can't Story think. Three. Yeah. yeah. I, but that's only because they bought Pixar. So, like, I like it was years ago. But like, I th- th- there's literally they literally have you know if you go back to the golden days of Disney with like you know uh, Beauty and the Beast and Lion King etc. Brilliant new IPs. Now they're just going. You know what everyone wants? Dumbo. <laughs> <laughs> Like directed I, by I, Tim like, Burton, nonetheless. I, I I actually struggle with that one more because yeah. I completely agree. Like I'm yeah. like, we we were talking about this the other day. We thought, why Dumbo? That's fine. But you go like to like, you go back in time and you go, Lion King, banger yeah. of a film. Um, what do you call it? Beauty and the Beast. Lion King. Banger. <laughs> 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 Beauty and the Beast. It's like you know when you get those yeah. like DVD covers and they have the reviews and the oh front, look, I honestly, have the, like the little wreath, the little wreath around the quote, of and you've got like, I, like banger of a film and underneath like, it's got like three stars yeah. and it's got like James McCaffrey. Yeah. Look, I I punch. honestly think banger that like people should come to me for <laughs> reviews. I'd I'd have the best review, like I'd have the best review comments okay. for people to stick okay. on. I'm gonna, like, okay, I'm gonna books throw some stuff. Okay, okay, uh, okay, okay. I'm gonna throw some films at you, and then okay. you've got to give me like the quote that goes on the front of the DVD. Okay, so so what I what yeah, I yeah. would, so, but but okay. like a sentence, like a real yeah, yeah, catching yeah, yeah. Like sentence what I, what that I would go would in the reads on the front yeah, of the yeah, DVD. What I, okay, like, okay, what I would okay. put up there right, as like my thing. for Yeah, I'm gonna throw some movies at you. Okay, um, what's some movies I know that you know? Okay. Interstellar. <laughs> Interstellar. Um, one of the best beginnings I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Three stars. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Batman, The Dark Knight. The best outing of Batman's. Uh, what do you what do you call it? The villains. Uh, they, they, they can't remember what they call them. Arkham they call Asylums. it no, 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 no. They call they, you know, they, they rogues gallery. That's it. Yeah. Um, best rogues gallery in a film. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Jay and Silent Bob. I'm really throwing you on the spot. The, <laughs> the, 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 I've got something. I'm just trying to word it. Uh, <laughs> uh, a. Uh, a stoner film for stoners who hate stoners. Oh, I actually Three like stars. that. I actually yeah. like that. All right. All right. Do me. <laughs> do me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Um, the Nightmare Before Christmas. The best stop motion animation film that features um, a man walking on a, a curling cliff. <laughs> Mine would be spooky, wiki, singy, songy greatness. <laughs> it's, good. <laughs> it's good. Um, it's good. It's uh, good. All right. Yes. Despicable me. Oh, despicable me. There you go. 
it would just be minions with a question mark at the end. Shit. <laughs> One and a half stars. Five stars. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'll, I'll go up with one more. Um, lock, stock, and two smoking barrels. Aston Villa? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Doesn't the big man support Aston Villa? I don't know. Yeah. I think I just made that up. Probably um, the best use of two shotguns in a film. Mine would Five be stars. Cockney Crime Capers Centre Stage. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's really good. You got a bit of alliteration in there as well. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I'd, like, I'd honestly, put if good, you... I'd put good crashy bangy film. Good crashy bangy film. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. So, so maybe, maybe um, on the Discord, you you can jump onto the Discord and give us other films that you would like us to yeah. Um, tagline. Yeah. Uh, a good tagline. And, and yeah. when we're not on the spot, we might be able to come up with something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Something uh, better. A bit better. <laughs> <laughs> This will be a good idea. This yeah, is yeah, yeah, throw yeah, yeah. people off. Yeah. This was a mistake. Um, this was, everything's a mistake. All right. So thank you for joining Episode us. Episode 20. Episode mistake. 20. In the bag. It's a mistake. Done. We did it. We Done. made it. Episode 20. We made it to episode 20. Wow. Um, this is a landmark. Maybe, maybe, maybe at some stage. <laughs> Producer even... Caroline in the background is like, wrap it up. <laughs> Come we on. Might, we might even... We might even rediscover the missing 14th episode. We won't. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone through there. You might, you might, you might. But maybe. But maybe. No, we won't. We won't. It's gone. But maybe. But it's possible. But, but probably maybe. not. Unlikely. Unlikely. Give us, um, give us your best. Unlikely. On the Discord, give us your best conspiracy theories. What happened to episode 14? What happened? What happened? What happened? Yeah. Was it all? Was it the Illuminati? Was it... Uh, were we gagged and silenced? What, yeah, we a was, cease and desist sort of. What was, what was episode 14? What was it? What mm. happened? Anyway. Anyway, uh, um, I've got one more thing I want to talk about. <laughs> uh, okay, no, there is... And I have to talk about this. This is what um, you've come to expect from us. The world's greatest content. By the way, the sorry. Ups that I, I want to say um, a big thank you to producer Caroline because she's had to edit this. And um, tonight's episode... Has None been, of this is getting ep- edited. It's all going in. It's all going straight. So yeah. um, tonight's been a bit of a... Um, for us, it's episode 20, but we've, uh, it's probably an editing nightmare. But I, I want to talk about something very, very briefly. Uh, recently, uh, when you're listening to this on Monday or sometime this week, um, it would have been about a week... Uh, before it was announced that uh, a popular UK music website, drownandsound.com, is shutting down for good. Um, drownandsound.com was established in the year 2000 uh, by Sean Adams. And uh, since then, it's had a huge wealth of incredible minds who have contributed to the website uh, in terms of reviews, in terms of the community, uh, it has a huge forum presence, very dedicated, rabid fan base uh, that have, over the last almost 20 years, uh, discussed music, all sorts of things. And uh, it's really odd uh, for me, especially because I grew up with this website, to be talking about a website in the past tense. Mm. Because. Mm. You have to understand that uh, things, websites in the early days were quite often constructed off the backs of people who just had a passion or a hobby. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Drown and Sound was born out of that. It was just a guy and a couple of other people who wanted to talk about something they loved. Mm. And now you see websites that are that are very much, uh, you don't have that anymore. You don't have your GeoCities. You don't have your niche websites uh that are hosted on a server at home it's it's all corporation based it's all you know pitchforks owned by condi nast kind of thing so um to see one of those truly homegrown communities Mm. finally come to an end is really truly the end of an era and it's quite it it really took me back and i i've been a huge part of that website for a long time and it introduced me to a huge wealth of music 
um, to a community that that sort of took me in, you know, because I, I grew up in a small town where this kind of thing was quite niche. Mm. You know, it was uh, it was it was unusual to meet people who had the same niche tastes as yeah. you, uh, which is quite common, I'm sure, for a lot of people growing up in a small town. And so, I just want to thank uh, Drown and Sound. I want to thank Sean Adams. I want to thank the community of Drown and Sound. Um, because if it went for them, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't actually, I, I truly don't think I'd be the person I am today. It's mm. bizarre and as melodramatic as that sounds, but I, I think, um, a lot of your taste when it comes to musical film or, or mm. the arts, um, it does shape who you are mm. in a, in a way. And, and so thank you. And, um, and I hope I hope there is a future for Drown and Sound. I know mm. that Sean Adams has talked about keeping the forums alive, but um, yeah, it's a, it's a bizarre yeah it's a bizarre thing to talk about. But thank you, mm. and that's it. that's all I wanted to say. I, I wanted to yeah well talk said about that. yeah well said. Uh, on that note, thank you very much. Come along, follow us in the stuff down the bottom. If you're listening to this podcast uh, and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Mm. Um, it means a lot to us. Uh, it it certainly helps us uh uh with all our bits and pieces and you know that sort of stuff um pop over to the twitch if you haven't been onto twitch and please again follow us there uh we're so close to our goal we are we really um, are. Yeah. and uh we're hoping to get affili- affiliated so mm. um <clears throat> pop over there give us a follow uh, it would mean the world to us mm. um Check the links if you're on YouTube. Check the links below for um, articles we've talked about today or for all of our social media stuff. Mm. Thanks. Enjoy the rest Cheers. of your week. Have a good one. Okay.